On today's show, Continental develops rider assistance systems for motorcycles, GM tests Vita i technology on public roads in China, and can Tesla meet its production targets for the Model 3? All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. We've been following the high inventory level automakers have been grappling with this year, but now they're starting to get it under control. Wards Auto reports that at the end of October, the day supply average was 71, which is down two days from the previous year. And there were 3.85 million vehicles in stock at the end of October, which is 1% more than the previous year. While it is still a high number, inventory levels are expected to decline over the last two months of the year, thanks to production cuts and year-end sales promotions that should boost sales. And speaking of sales, on a global basis, things are going strong for the industry. Wards reports that automakers sold 8.7 million vehicles in September, which is up 4.6% compared to a year ago. Sales were up a strong 5% in North America, But over in Europe, sales were flat, mostly due to drops in the UK and Germany, the two largest markets in Europe. Sales in Asia were up 6%, with most countries in the region posting big gains. And in South America, sales continue to rebound and were up a big 17.5%. Through September, automakers have sold 70.6 million vehicles, which is a 3% gain compared to last year. Still to come, GM tests vehicle-to-infrastructure technology in Shanghai. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Hyundai, better drives us. We recently showed you how the supplier Continental and Argus Cybersecurity are working to keep hackers out of cars. And to make sure it continues to have access to that cybersecurity know-how, Continental has acquired Argus. The cybersecurity company will become part of Continental's subsidiary, Electrobit. The two will continue to work on complete cybersecurity solutions and services, as well as secure over-the-air updates. In other continental news, the supplier is demonstrating what it calls an electronic passenger, or aids for motorcycle riders. Traffic sign assistant can inform the rider of speed limits in places where it's illegal to overtake. Sensors in the back of the bike provide blind spot detection. And when forward sensors are combined with the braking system, it can provide forward collision warning, emergency braking assist, and adaptive cruise control. Continental says it's not trying to take a rider's freedom away from them to make a maneuver, but rather allow the safety system to, quote, support riders without patronizing them. Back in May, GM started testing vehicle-to-infrastructure, or V2I, on the streets of Michigan, and now it's taking the technology all the way to China. It tested vehicles in Shanghai that were able to receive real-time data from traffic lights, which was then used to show drivers the optimal speed to travel to make it through a green light without having to stop. Not only can this cut down on hard braking, but it's also a much more efficient way to drive. Coming up next, can Tesla meet its production goals with the Model 3? We'll look into that right after this. Lighter, safer, stronger, quieter, and more sustainable. Tell us where you need to go, and we'll help you get there. Dow Automotive Systems. We don't succeed unless you do. Tesla was hit with some bad news last week. First, it posted its largest quarterly loss ever, nearly $620 million. And it also announced it's delaying volume production of the Model 3 for three months due to production bottlenecks. And on last week's Autoline After Hours, John Gary and their journalist colleagues discussed if Tesla can meet its production targets. Even if they get this thing running, I mean, is it, is it going to be too little too late? You know, I think, the, look, you know, Tesla has a history of under-delivering 
and yeah. over-promising. Right. This is another example of it. So if he's up to line speed July next year, I think he's good to go. You think people will tolerate I, that? It, well, you know, th there will be enough who will, they'll lose people who have put the deposit down. They'll lose a bunch of them. But there'll be enough there to go, hey, look, boom, he, we're, we're hitting our, our, our line rate. He and, won't be. Well, we'll see. No, I'll tell you why. Because right now they are not spending. They said during the news conference they are not going to spend right now on expanding the line so they can hit the 10,000 a week target that they said. <laughs> and whenever they do spend the money, it's going to take a time to validate. And they've got to make sure that they don't make the errors that they did already. So it could take them a year or more <laughs> this is, before this is they're the most ready. Absurd line, this, to your point, Paul, this is the most absurd line I've ever read, read, perhaps ever, in the auto industry. Quote, with respect to the timing for producing 10,000 units per week, it has always been our intention to implement that capacity after we've achieved a 5,000 per week runway rate. Really? You know, and, and I bet you like 5,001, they'd have to wait till they had 5,002. To me, the, the <laughs> stupidest like, line... It makes no sense. It makes yeah. no sense. <laughs> the stupidest line that Musk came up with was talking about in some parts of manufacturing, we're hitting a run rate of 5,000 a week, 7,000 a week. And Gary... You know manufacturing. Your assembly line can only move as fast as your slowest station. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you can make 7,000 a week over here, but you're only building 12, 12 a day, right? Right. It doesn't matter that you can make 7,000 over here. That's total overproduction. Right. So if, they have, so, so if they have this burst capacity of 1,000 units in stamping, but they have the, the weld capacity of 500 units in the burst capacity. Seems to me we have large piles of stampings that are uh, piling up all over the factory. Uh, can I so I, I just think this is it for him. You can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here again tomorrow. We hope you are too. Don't miss Ward's Auto Conference on Artificial Intelligence, November 9, in Birmingham, Michigan. Learn how AI is disrupting the automotive industry. Meet Silicon Valley technologists from companies like IBM, Nuance, NVIDIA, and Continental. Learn more at wardsauto.com AI.